This is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, chapter 6, 7, and 8, packet E, lesson 7. Today we will estimate fractions, sums, and differences using benchmarks. Our learning target, at the end of today's lesson, we should confidently be able to say, I can make reasonable estimates of fractions, sums, and differences using benchmarks. Remember that an estimate means that I am going to be rounding. I am not using an exact answer. The sum is the answer to an addition problem. The difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Therefore, we'll be doing estimates of addition and subtraction problems. So again, a reminder of our prerequisite, fractions that are equal to 1. In this first picture, the whole Hershey bar is broken into four pieces. We have all four of them, so we have 4 fourths, and 4 fourths is equal to 1. In this next picture, the Hershey bar is broken into 10 pieces. We have all 10 of them. 10 tenths is equal to 1. Third picture, the Hershey bar is broken into two pieces. We have both of them, all two of them, and two halves is equal to 1. Fourth picture, our whole Hershey bar is broken into three pieces. We have three of them, and three-thirds is equal to 1. So any number over itself equals 1. Please stop the video and complete worksheet for prerequisites for one whole. Our next prerequisite reminder, fractions that equal zero. Here we had a whole Hershey bar that was broken into four pieces, but we have none of them. We have zero of them, and zero fourths equals zero. In this picture, we had a whole Hershey bar that was broken into ten pieces to make a whole bar. We have zero of them. Zero tenths equals zero. In our third picture, the whole Hershey bar is broken into two pieces. We have zero of them, zero halves equals zero. And finally, our fourth picture, zero thirds equals zero. So notice that if the numerator is zero, no matter what the denominator is, the total is still zero. Please stop the video and complete the worksheet for prerequisites for zero. And finally, our prerequisite review for fractions that equal to one-half. In this first picture, the whole Hershey bar is broken into four pieces. We have two of them. Two-fourths equals one-half. Because my denominator four is an even number, half of that is two. So when my numerator is half of my denominator, it equals one-half. Let's take a look at our next picture. It takes ten pieces to make the whole Hershey bar. We have five of them. So we have one half because again, 10 is an even number, half of that is 5, and when the numerator is half of the denominator, the fraction is equal to one half. In this picture, the whole Hershey bar is broken into two pieces. We have one of them. Again, even denominator of 2, half of 2 is 1. That's what my numerator is. When the numerator is half of den the denominator, we have the fraction one half. Let's take a look at this last fraction. The whole Hershey bar is broken into three pieces, and we have half of them. The only problem is I can't show half of an odd number because half of an odd number is whatever a number it is and a half. And I can't use a fraction in my numerator. I can't use a decimal in my numerator. Therefore, when my denominator is an odd number and I want to find half, I have to say it's between two fractions. They'll both have the denominator that the picture shows or that you're talking about. And how do I figure out what two fractions it's between? I look at my denominator. In this case, it's three. If I do one less than that, it will be an even number. So what's one less than three? Two. What's half of two? One. So I can say it's between one-third and the next number larger than one, which is two-thirds. So one half falls between one third and two thirds. And that's kind of true because if I draw my line here, that yellow line ends at the one third, and this next line ends at the two thirds, and my red line where the chocolate ends falls halfway between the one third and the two thirds. Please stop the video and complete the worksheet for prerequisites for one half. So let's take a look at example number one. It's a familiar example. Angel rode his bike to school today. The distance from his house to the end of the street is one-sixth of a mile. 
The distance from the end of his street to school is three-eighths of a mile. About how far is Angel's house from school? My question starts with about, very important. I know that means estimate and not an exact answer. So I need to know about how far Angel's house is from school. What do I know? I know the distance from his house to the end of the street is one-sixth of a mile. I also know that the distance from the end of his street to school is three-eighths of a mile. So let's go ahead and draw that picture again. Here's Angel's house. Beautiful. I know I'm such an artist. And that's the end of his street. And here's where we have a cross street. Okay, the distance from Angel's house to the end of his street is one-sixth of a mile. So we'll write that down. Now we're going to draw a picture of his school. Again, I'm such an artist, I know. And the distance from the end of his street to the school is three-eighths of a mile. Now, if I'm going all the way from his house to his school, what would the total amount be? Well, it's a total, obviously, and I have two streets, two distances. I'm going to need to add them together. And again, about means an estimate, so I'm going to estimate one-sixth plus three-eighths. Let's move to scrap paper to see how to do that with benchmarks this time. Well, we learned in lesson six that one way to estimate fractions is to use a number line. We're going to learn here in chapter seven, or in lesson seven, another way to estimate fractions is to use benchmarks. So we said my actual problem is one-sixth plus three-eighths. We're going to focus in on our one-sixth first. What's the whole number in one-sixth? There isn't one. So when there is nothing, it's kind of like a zero. It's kind of like I have zero and one-sixth. So what's a little bit less than one-sixth whole number-wise? It would be zero. What's well, the next whole number after one-sixth? It would be one. And what would fall right in between zero and one? One-half. We need to use the benchmark of either zero, one-half, or one. How do we do that? We think about the denominator. My denominator is six. I want to find fractions that have the denominator of six that are equivalent to zero, one-half, and one. Well, my denominator is six. I'm going to give myself denominators of six straight across the board. How many sixes equal to zero? Zero sixths. How many sixes equal to one? Six sixths. It's the number over itself. How many sixths is equal to one half? Well, what's half of six? Three. So three sixths is equal to one half. My actual fraction was one sixth. Is that closer to zero sixths, three sixths, or six sixths? I would agree that one-sixth is closer to zero-sixths, so my benchmark that I will use is the zero. So the benchmark estimate for one-sixth is zero. I will write the zero down. Again, this is an addition problem. I will write the plus down. And now what I need to do is find a benchmark for three-eighths. Again, focus in on the whole number in this problem. There isn't one which means the whole number is zero. So this is going to either round to my benchmarks of zero, one-half, or one. But my denominator here is eight. So I need my fractions to all have denominators of eight. Well, zero-eighths is equal to zero, eight-eighths is equal to one, and how many eighths are equal to one half? Well, what's half of eight? Four. Four eighths are equal to one half. So what I need to focus in on now is which one is three eighths closest to? Is three eighths closest to zero eighths, four eighths, or eight eighths? I agree. Three eighths is closest to four eighths. And four eighths, we know the benchmark is one half. So I will take this zero, and I will say zero plus one-half. Since three-eighths estimates to one-half, which estimates right down there to that one-half. So the question is, what is zero plus one-half? Zero plus one-half is one-half. Therefore, my original problem, one-sixth plus three-eighths, is about one-half. 
And again, this is a word problem, so our answer does need a unit. Let's go back to our question about how far is Angel's house from school. So we'll say Angel's house is about one half, and what's the unit? Doesn't tell me in my question, but if I look back at the blue, it says one sixth of a mile, and the green says three eighths of a mile, so my unit has to be mile. One half is less than one, so it will stay singular as mile. Angel's house is about one half mile from school, and that's my final answer. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now. Let's take a look at example number two. Example number two says estimate nine tenths minus one fourth. So again, we're going to estimate. This lesson is about estimating with benchmarks. My benchmarks are either going to be zero, one half, or one because my whole number here is zero. My denominator is ten. So I'll make all of my denominators here tenths. How many tenths equals to zero? Zero tenths. How many tenths are equal to one whole? Ten tenths. How many tenths are equal to one half? Well, what's half of ten? Five. Five tenths. So is nine tenths closer to zero tenths, five tenths, or ten tenths? I would agree. Nine tenths is closer to ten tenths, which means my benchmark will be one. So I write down the one down here. This is a subtraction problem. I bring down my subtraction sign, and now I'm going to focus in on my next fraction. One fourth. The whole number is nothing, which is zero. So its benchmarks will either be zero, one half, or one. My denominator, remember, is four. So I'm going to give myself a denominator of four and say zero. How many fourths is equal to zero? Zero fourths. How many fourths is equal to one whole? number over itself, four-fourths. How many fourths is equal to one-half? Well, what's half of four? Two, so two-fourths. So now again, I want to take my one-fourth. Is that closer to zero-fourths, two-fourths, or four-fourths? I think that one-fourth is going to be right smack between zero-fourths and two-fourths. And remember, when it's right in the middle, we round up. So we're going to say two-fourths, which the benchmark is one-half. 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half, right? If I have a whole Hershey bar, I give you half, I have a half left. So my final answer, 9 tenths minus 1 fourth equals 1 half. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 2 right now. So let's take a look at example number 3. Example number 3 says estimate 4 and 5 twelfths plus two and six sevenths. I'm going to focus in on my first mixed number, which is four and five twelfths. My whole number is four, so it's either going to round between four, four and one half, or five. My denominator, notice, is twelve, so it's going to be four with something twelfths, four with something twelfths, or four with something twelfths. Four and how many twelfths is the same thing as four? It really means four and zero. So four and zero twelfths, zero twelfths is zero, four plus zero is four. Four and zero twelfths is the same thing as four. Well what is the same as five? Four plus one is five, so I need four and twelve twelfths will equal five. And now I need four and a half. Well half of twelve is six, so four and six twelfths will equal four and a half. I'm going to focus in on my fraction, 5 twelfths. Is that closer to 0 twelfths, 6 twelfths, or 12 twelfths? Yes, I agree, it's closer to 6 twelfths. So I'm going to use the benchmark 4 and 1 half. All right, 4 and 1 half. Bring down my plus sign, and now I'm going to move to my number on the right side. My whole number here is 2. So it's going to round to either, it's going to either round down to 2, to 2 and a half, or it will round up to 3. Let's focus in on my denominator, which is 7, so I want 7 for all of this. 2 and 0 7 equals 2. Go down to the 3, 2 and 7 7 equals 3, right? Because 2 plus 1 is 3. 
and what is going to equal 2 and 1 half. Well, if my denominator is 7, half of 7, I can't do it. So I'm going to do that. It's some place between trick. Okay, here's my sevenths. Here's my two and something sevenths. What's one less than seven? Six. What's half of six? Three. What's one more than seven? Eight. What's half of eight? Four. So two and a half is going to be some place between two and three sevenths and two and four sevenths. Now we're going to focus in on our number itself. And I see six sevenths. Is that closer to the zero sevenths, the seven sevenths, or is it someplace between the three and the four sevenths? I agree, six sevenths is closer to seven sevenths, therefore we will use this benchmark estimate of three. So I have four and a half plus three. I might be able to see it and add it, or I can write it vertically, four and a half plus three, line up my whole numbers, a half plus nothing is one half, 4 plus 3 is 7. So my final answer, 4 and 5 twelfths plus 2 and 6 sevenths is about 7 and 1 half. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 3 right now. Finally, in example number 4, it tells us to estimate 3 and 7 elevenths minus 3 and 1 tenth. So I focus on my whole number is 3. So you know they're going to round down to a plain 3 to three and a half or to four. My denominator is 11, so it will be three and zero elevenths, which is the same thing as three. So my next whole number, which is three and 11 elevenths, which is the same thing as four. And I need my half. So what's half of 11? Ooh, it's an odd number. Okay, what's one less than 11, 10? What's half of 10? 5. So it will be 3 and 5 elevenths. Or the next number higher. It's one more than 11. 12. What's half of 12? 6. 3 and 6 elevenths. So it's either going to round to 3 and 0 elevenths, somewhere between 3 and 5 elevenths, or 3 and 6 elevenths, or 3 and 11 elevenths. Now let's focus in again on my number. I have 3 and 7 elevenths. What is that closer to? Yes, I do think it's closer to the 3 and 6 elevenths, which means that my benchmark will be 3 and 1 half. Write down 3 and 1 half, minus, and let's move over to the right side. My whole number on this side is 3, so it's either going to round to 3, 3 and a half, or 4. My denominator is 10. So it's either going to be 3 and 0 tenths, which is the same thing as 3. 3 and 10 tenths, which is the same thing as 4. Or 3 and how many tenths? What's half of 10? 5. 3 and 5 tenths, which is the same thing as 3 and a half. Again, I'm going to focus in on my number, and I have 3 and 1 tenth. What's that closer to? Yes, I agree it's closer to 3 and 0 tenths, which means that benchmark number will be 3. Write it right down. I have 3 and a half minus 3. If you can look at that and do that, that's great. If not, you can always write it vertically. 3 and a half, line up my whole number column. 1 half minus nothing is 1 half. 3 minus 3 is 0. So my final answer for 3 and 7 elevenths minus 3 and 1 tenth is 0 and 1 half, or Simply, and the better way to say it, one half. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number four right now. So let's review. When estimating with benchmarks, we take our mixed number and we decide what the lower whole number it might round to. In this case, three and seven elevenths might round to three. What that number with a half would be, so that would be three and a half, or what the next larger whole number would be. So what comes after three? Four. We write that whole number and its fraction with the same denominator that we're given. In this case, it's 11. So 3 equals 3 and 0 elevenths. 4 equals 3 and 11 elevenths. And 3 and 1 half, well, 11 is an odd number. So 3 and 1 half would be someplace between 3 and 5 elevenths. 
and 3 and 6 elevenths. Then we go back and look at the actual number we had, which is 3 and 7 elevenths, and see what it's closest to. Here we said, well, 3 and 7 elevenths is definitely closer to 3 and 6 elevenths, and that's closest to 3 and a half. So we wrote down the benchmark of 3 and a half, and we put our subtraction sign since this was a subtraction problem. We did the same type of benchmark estimation on this side, and we said that 3 and 1 tenth would be closer to 3 and 0 tenths, so that was our lower benchmark, which was the 3. Then we went ahead and subtracted. In this case, we had 3 and a half minus 3 equaled 1 half. Remember, if your whole number is a 0, you can drop it and just write the fraction. Now that we've finished both this lesson and the last one, we want you to know that when estimating fractions, when you're told to estimate fractions, at this point you can now choose the estimation that you prefer. You can either choose number line estimation or benchmarks. Do the one that you do the most correctly. It's kind of like whether your difference is traditional multiplication or box method multiplication. It doesn't matter. They'll both get you the same answer. What you need to do is choose the one that gets you the right answer most often. Hopefully by now you can confidently say, I can make reasonable estimates of fractions, sums, and differences using benchmarks or number lines. You just have to be good at one or the other of them. We will continue doing more practice in class, and whichever one you do the best at, if you have any questions or concerns, please see one of the teachers and we will definitely sit and work with you with solving those problems. Good luck with the lesson.